Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Tinley Park Public Library. Um, tonight we have Zoe Huspin here. She's here from the Citizens Utility Board and she's going to be discussing the Electric Vehicle Buyer's Handbook. Welcome, Zoe. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Let's go ahead and get started. So we are talking about an introduction to electric vehicles. So today we're going to be covering what is an electric vehicle, the costs of one compared to a gas or diesel vehicle, the range they have, the rebates, incentives, and fees associated, charging specifics, considerations before buying, and other additional resources for anybody who's looking to purchase or lease an electric vehicle. And we'll make sure that you have access to the slides after the presentation if, if you'd, you'd like, like to take, take a look, look at them. them. So first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Citizens Utility Board. That is the group that I'm here with tonight. So we are a nonprofit consumer advocacy group focusing on energy and utility policy in Illinois. So our goal is to advocate for consumer protections and also uh, fight utility rate hikes. I know we're not talking about that today, but that is also like one of our big goals. We represent utility rate payers. We help individuals. We have a consumer hotline that you can call with any consumer complaints about any of your bills, like your water costs, your electric costs, things like that. We also conduct consumer education. So people like me on our outreach team come and speak to communities throughout the Chicagoland area and beyond about energy efficiency, um, your utility costs, things like that. So yeah, our big goal is advocating for affordable energy and sustainable policies in Illinois. We also provide virtual services, um, so you can also receive a free analysis of your utility bill by emailing any copies to UBC at citizensutilityboard.org. We also do um, in-person UBCs pretty often, so you can check on our website to see if any are coming up in your area if you'd like to go in person. So the bottom line here is that not all EVs are the same. So first, we're going to talk about what an electric vehicle is. So it's any car or truck that plugs into an electric socket. EVs also contain a battery that stores the energy necessary to power the motors. So all electric vehicles are known as battery electric vehicles or BEVs and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, BEVs, I guess you could say, <laughs> use both an electric motor and a gasoline engine. So they use battery until the charge is depleted. But that's not be confused with a hybrid vehicle as hybrids use exclusively gasoline. I know there are a lot of different models out there, so I just wanted to put the facts there for you. <laughs> so why are we now seeing electric vehicles emerge? So only recently have batteries with sufficient storage become readily available on the market. I'm sure you guys have noticed this too, driving around and taking public transit. I personally see a lot of electric vehicles out that I never did before. So we can see this change happening around us. Um, and this is because petroleum fueled cars and trucks are also the world's largest source of carbon dioxide. Since producing electricity produces far less carbon dioxide than burning fuel, they just make sense. <laughs> Falling sticker prices combined with lower operating costs have also helped make these more realistic and affordable for the average consumer. Um, finally, federal and state level funding have ensured that produc production and purchasing will increase for years to come. So we're going to see more and more of these electric vehicles out on the road. Um, and that's because of these incentives and other initiatives that are aiming to make them affordable. So we're going to talk a little bit here about um, electric vehicles versus gas powered vehicles. There are a wide variety of reasons why electric vehicles are an excellent choice. Uh, so they, their motors are smooth, powerful, quiet, and produce no exhaust fumes. I actually have driven an electric vehicle for a different role that I had previously, and I can attest to this. It was a very good experience. I was nervous. I was like, I've only driven like gas powered vehicles growing up, but it was great. I was very impressed by the capabilities of the vehicle. They also have instant torque resulting in quick acceleration. They also have good stability and handling due to the low center of gravity from battery weight. They're also low maintenance due to less parts, and they do not utilize any petroleum fuel. So EV batteries and pollution. Most EV batteries are guaranteed for eight years or 100,000 miles, which is about standard with like a typical gas powered vehicle. But most batteries, however, last significantly longer than the guarantee. 
Over time, capacity degrades, meaning that the battery will need more frequent charging. You might notice this with your phones as well if you have one. They tend to lose their charge more quickly over time, and that's because the battery degrades, so it's a similar concept here. Um, but nevertheless, like we talked about, they oftentimes outlast the lifetime of the vehicle. The only emissions or pollutants affiliated with EVs come from how they are charged and how materials are obtained. Studies suggest that lifetime emissions of EVs are 60 to 68% less than gasoline powered vehicles. Okay, so now that you know the facts, let's talk about the cost. That's the big question here. Does an EV cost more than a gas powered vehicle? EVs traditionally have a higher upfront cost compared with gasoline powered vehicles. And I think a lot of you probably already know this already if you're at all interested in EVs. Um, the least expensive model on the market is the Nissan Leaf which starts at 27,400. That's the one that I've driven before for a previous role, um, but that one's unfortunately discontinued. So the price range varies greatly depending on the make and model. Adventure vehicles are more expensive, just like a gas vehicle that's adventure oriented tends to be more expensive. The key is to remember that savings build up in the long run, meaning that the higher initial cost is eventually recuperated. So I know it might seem scary up front with that higher price tag, but the idea is that over time, um, those costs will level out and you'll actually save money in the long run. So government offered rebates and incentives can also help to trim down the cost of these vehicles. I think a lot of people don't know that these incentives exist. So part of our goal is just to make them more aware of which ones exist and are accessible to you. So can I save money driving an EV? The short answer is yes, you can. EV operating costs are substantially lower than traditional vehicles. According to the U.S. Department of Energy, EVs are 40% cheaper to maintain. Electricity is also far cheaper than gasoline. I'm sure we all know how volatile gasoline prices have been the last couple of years. And an average EV travels 3.7 miles on a kilowatt per hour of electricity. So fuel cost is roughly 3.8 cents per mile. Whereas a traditional vehicle averaging 26 miles per gallon and paying $4 per gallon costs 15.4 cents per mile to operate. As such, savings can add up with increased mileage over time. Are there electric rate plans to lower the cost of EV charging? In Illinois, both ComEd and Ameren offer a variable rate plan that works well for EV drivers. So with both programs, consumers pay the hourly price of electricity rather than a flat rate. And I don't know if any of you are on the hourly peak pricing program, but I know that, that ComEd offers that for your electric in your homes. Another That's another great way to save money if you're looking for energy efficiency overall. So it's the same concept here, just with your EV charger. So EV customers can program their cars to charge at night when prices are cheaper. A Cub study showed that most households would save money under these programs. But once again, it is important to analyze your overall usage. It's not one case fits all. It's really important to look at what's best for you and your lifestyle. So here you can see the price per kilowatt hour in cents and you can see time of day. This is a day in June this past summer. Um, so you can see that these prices really spike, I would say around like 12 p.m with the high points between 4 and 6 p.m. So this shows you how effective that hourly pricing can be because if you try to avoid this middle wedge of the day when everybody is using energy, you can save a lot of money when it comes to charging your EV. You can see how these prices really dip off at night, especially um, in the early hours of the morning. Will an EV save me money in the long run? The opportunity to save money in the long term certainly exists through programs like dynamic pricing, which is what we are just talking about. Ultimately, savings will depend upon the cost of the car, fuel efficiency, mileage, and the amount of time you keep the vehicle. So it's hard for us to give you like a specific number estimate because it depends on so many factors, but this is a good way to gauge it. So for an EV traveling 12,000 miles per year, Typical fuel cost savings in Illinois would add up to around $1,400 when charging at home. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about electric vehicle range, which I know is a hot topic of concern among buyers. So how much range is enough? How far can EVs travel? EV range depends on the storage capacity of the battery and the efficiency of the vehicle. Today's models of EV can oftentimes travel up to 300 miles on a single charge and larger battery me means increased price. 
deciding range is a key aspect of purchasing an electric vehicle, but you might not need as much range as you think. If the bulk of your traveling is around town, you likely will not need a larger battery. The average car in Illinois travels less than 40 miles a day, so it's not too high. You can continuously top off the battery overnight as well. It's also important to keep in mind that the usable range of your EV will be less than the full battery capacity. Batteries operate at different efficiencies depending on the weather, which is really important to keep in mind because we do live in Illinois, which can get quite cold. So it's going to be less efficient in the winter, anywhere from five to 40% less efficient in the cold. Battery is also responsible for powering the vehicle's heating and cooling. As such, the best range for your EV should fall somewhere around twice the amount of range of your typical travel amount per day. So if you're traveling like 10 miles in a day, the best range would be like about 20 miles if possible. Electric vehicle rebates and fee. Are there incentives for buying electric vehicles? That's the big question. So the 2022 IRA provides tax credits and POS rebates. So it ranges, but the numbers can be 7,500 to 3,750 for EVs. Um, the rebate only applies to the following. So for the 7,500 one, earn no more than 300K. And for the 3,750 number, earn no more than 150K. So the vehicle has to be assembled in North America with an MSRP of 55,000 for cars, 80,000 for an SUV slash truck. For battery sourcing, it does need to be a US trade partner or domestic. Buying new, so no leasing in this one to qualify for full credit. And if you're buying a used electric vehicle, it can cover 30% uh, of the cost up to 4,000. As of now, 10 EVs get 7,500. And I'm not an expert on this. This is just an introduction. So if you'd like to deep dive into these resources, we have them linked here and later on in the presentation. Does Illinois provide a rebate for purchasing an electric vehicle? Thanks to the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act, CJA, Illinois, Illinoisans, I think that's how you say it, can now access incentives for the purchase of EVs. The admin for this is the Illinois EPA, and the $4,000 rebate applies exclusively to electric vehicles. No hybrids or FEVs like we were mentioning earlier, um, and $1,500 for motorcycles. So for new and used, um, if used, there can be no previous rebate that you've already applied to the electric vehicle. Unfortunately, this one is already out of funds. It opened November 1st, 2023. It's super popular, like thousands of rebates people have used. But the good news is there is a 2024 program upcoming. And I was keeping an eye out on the website. They don't have it posted yet when their next um, funds will be available, but you can sign up with your email to be notified. Um, but it is great to see that this is something that people can actually use and they're taking advantage, advantage of, so it's promising for future buyers. Are there any additional costs to purchasing an EV? Here in Illinois, there is at least one additional cost for individuals looking to purchase an EV. So the state of Illinois charges a $100 annual EV fee to recuperate lost costs associated with gas taxes. Um, this fee goes into the state road fund to help pay for highways and improvements, but just to put it in perspective for you, the $100 fee is the equivalent of what you would pay in gas taxes to drive roughly 7,500 miles. So it's kind of evening out at the end of the day. <laughs> in addition, you may find that your insurance costs are higher due to the value of the car itself and labor for post-collision fixes. But again, these things might change in the future. Like We don't know what the landscape is going to look like as more people obtain electric vehicles, but these are just some costs to keep in mind up front. And you can see in this graphic here, we're looking at annual fuel costs to power an EV versus 30 mile per gallon um, ICV at varying gasoline prices. So we're assuming 12,000 miles per year, but you can still see here, even with those added costs, the EV um, still helps you save a sig significant amount of money. So there are still benefits to it for you as a consumer. Charging your electric vehicle. How does EV charging work? All you need to charge an electric vehicle is a place to plug it in. For most EV owners, that means either a home garage or a parking space. The length needed to charge the vehicle depends on the amount of power in a charge and how far you are traveling. Like we were talking about earlier, it depends on the specific model. There are three basic levels of charging speeds and plugs. 
While level three chargers are undoubtedly the fastest, they are not practical for EV users who travel locally or sparingly. So you don't want to invest all this money to have access to a charger that you don't actually need to. So it's important to think about the right fit for you and your lifestyle like we've talked about. So level one is where all EVs come with a cord that can plug into a standard 120 volts, three prong household wall socket, like any of those in your home that you like plug a hair dryer into. So these use about the same amount of electricity as a toaster or a hair dryer. The slow charge will provide three to five miles of travel per hour of charging. That doesn't sound like much, but the average car is parked more than 20 hours a day. So charging at home on L1 might give you 300 to 500 miles of weekly travel, which is pretty good. You may find that's plenty for around town driving. With level two, it's like an electric stove. They operate at 240 volts. So depending on the charger and battery, L2 can provide about 12 to 50 miles of travel per hour of charge. So it's a little bit faster than the one we just mentioned. All EVs can connect to L2 chargers, which are sprouting in many public garages, parking lots, and workplaces. I personally have seen these a lot at like the malls in my town and things like that. So they'll definitely becoming more accessible and common. To have L2 charging at home, you need to extend 240 volts wiring to your garage or parking spot and install a charge station usually on the wall. So this is like a little bit more effort if you're looking to get that um, higher charge rate at home. Some chargers plug into the same type of wall receptacle as a closed dryer, but the most powerful home chargers need to be hardwired. Older electric service might require upgrading and you should have a qualified electrician check it out and do the installation. If you decide this is the right fit for you and you want it at your home. Okay, so level three. The direct current fast charge runs on 480 volts, so you cannot install it at home. Almost all BEVs, battery electric vehicles, can accept L3 charging, but the power of the stations and what each EV model can handle varies. So that means there's a big difference in how long it takes to quick charge. There's also a couple different connector standards. So this problem might get solved eventually, but today you can't fast charge a non-Tesla at a Tesla L3 charge station. Keep in mind that fast charging will only give you an 80% charge before slowing down a lot. That last 20% takes longer in order to protect the battery life. I know this is with my phone too when I plug it in. Like that last 20%, it feels very slow to get to that. So just to give you some perspective. So at home, electric vehicle chargers. The type of charger you need will depend on a number of factors, including your daily driving habits like we keep talking about. For many drivers, a standard 120 volt socket already on the wall is more than adequate. Level two chargers may better serve individuals who drive lots of miles or multiple trips per day. If you are looking to make the change to a level two charger, you may need to upgrade your electric service. Updating and installing the necessary electronics may prove to be a substantial upfront cost. The good news though, is that there are and will be many charging rebates. The type of charger you need will depend on a number of factors, including your daily driving habits. Home level two chargers cost anywhere from $200 to $1,000, depending on the manufacturer. You will need to check your car and home capabilities for that. Increasingly, many EVs are equipped with bi-directional charging, which allows EV owners to utilize their vehicle as a battery for other means. In addition, many EVs now have smart charging, which manages when the vehicle charges. This is actually really cool if you're looking to make your home more energy efficient and save money while still powering your appliances. These programs allow you to charge the EV at a certain time, such as when renewable energy is most active on the grid. If you have solar panels in your home too, that's a whole nother cool thing. That energy that you um, take from, from the sun that you store in your solar panels can also help charge your electric vehicle. So that's another cool option out there. So bottom line, is an electric vehicle right for me? Here's a quick checklist before you buy. When deciding whether to acquire an EV, ask yourself the following questions. Where will I charge my EV? Is it gonna be at my house? Is it gonna be at that local mall near me? Like these are good things to think about. Can I rely solely on public charging? How much will public charging cost me? How will I use my EV for local driving, for long trips? Should I buy a FEV or a BEV? <laughs> should I lease or buy? How long will I keep the car? And should I consider a pre-owned electric vehicle?
So where else can I charge? How much will it cost? Charging at home is convenient, reliable, and the lowest cost manner to charge. The majority of EV owners plug in at home with level two chargers. For renters, explore working with your landlord to develop a charging model. So ask yourself, is there public level two or level three charging available near me? If there is, it might be more worthwhile just to install level one at your home and like go to the public location and use level two if you need a faster charge. The price of public charging varies widely based on where you are, but at the end of the day, it is still cheaper than gasoline. Make sure to research the pricing model used by your closest public charger. And finally, consider how you will be using your EV. So I have some additional resources here, um, like from Ameren, they provide some info on electric vehicles, Comet, if that's your service. Um, there's also Plug in America, which is the nation's largest association of EV drivers and enthusiasts. So if you have like specific questions that only someone who owns one can answer, these are great resources. Um, feel free to take any pictures of this. But yeah, that's, that's what I have for you guys today. So thank you. And yeah. now, uh, <laughs> uh, if you would like to ask any questions, um, I'll do my best to answer them for you guys. I have one. You said it costs less money, but once the battery starts going down, it's going to take longer to charge. Mm -hmm. Does that mean more money? Um, it just than, than it was before. I mean, is it going to be three cents or four cents a kilowatt, or is it going to keep on going down? It's going to take ten minutes instead of five, and it's going to be six kilowatt. You know. Yeah, no, that's a fair question. So she's asking about um, as the battery starts to degrade, will charging it become more expensive, essentially? And I would say because the battery life is so long that it's meant to outlast the amount of time that you'll use the car for, that I don't think you're going to encounter that problem unless you are really trying to ride out the life of your car and you have it for like a very long time, then you might notice increased sorry decreased capability but it shouldn't affect like the cost that you're paying very much um but yeah, i can also like provide you more resources if you'd like to learn a bit more <laughs> yes is there a um you know tesla is better than ford ford is better than gm that's a fair question i personally don't have a strong opinion on that um i feel like some of these people might though uh, because they're the ones that have bought those um i mean i will say like the nissan leaf i have had a great experience with but i know that's discontinued so that might not be as helpful um it just depends again on like the model and the pricing of the model and what you're looking for so that's not like a like a one size fits all if that makes sense I have a couple of um, comments. Sure, yeah. Because I've actually been in the market for an electric vehicle. Okay. Um, I think an electric vehicle, an all electric vehicle, is not the best fit for everyone. But in a household where maybe you have more than one car, it mm -hmm. could work really well, like as a around town commuter car. Yeah. Um. So if ever I if I was you know, everyone has range anxiety. Sure. Um, and so you're thinking, oh gosh, if I go on a long trip, I have to plan out, you know, where I'm going to charge it up. And then, um, mm -hmm. you know, the infrastructure isn't quite there yet. Right. But for someone like me, yeah. um, I have like a 30 mile commute per day. So um, I can charge up at night, you know, I would just go around, you know, shopping. I mean, as you said, in your presentation, most people don't drive more than what did you say, like 40 miles? I believe or it's something like 30 that. miles. Oh, that was the average commute. Yeah, I believe so. So I think for someone who doesn't do a lot of driving, it could be a really great investment. Yeah. Um, and what I've actually noticed in um, researching different types of cars and also shopping for used cars, mm -hmm. um, the prices for, for like the 2023 models um, like they're owned by the dealership and they have like very low miles, like 3,400 miles or something. Mm -hmm. The prices have come down by about 30%. So like you can get a very nice car that if you were to buy a newer model, mm -hmm. you would pay, let's say you pay 50,000 or yeah. um, a very nice, like um, if you were to get a Tesla or like yeah. a Volvo or like, you know, um, 
the Nissan Leaf is discontinued, but Nissan now has an Aria. It's, mm -hmm. It just came out in um, 23. And it's a beautiful car. I mean, there's beautiful cars that are like, you know, very nice. And you might pay close to 60,000. You can get them for like, I don't know, around 30, which is mm -hmm. shocking. Yeah. It's, so yeah. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on with that. <laughs> um, but it it just seems like that's the way to go because they have such low miles and they're very similar to the 2024 models. Um, so I'm going to be looking at purchasing a used, well, a used, which yeah. the, dealer, the dealer just had it on their lot and they're using it for test drives and maybe like a loaner or something like that. But it's essentially a brand new car. So you're getting a brand new EV um, and you still get a warranty. Um, and the I think there's, um, I don't know if there was, there's been a lot of like people kind of, you know, kind of nervous about the range um, mm -hmm. issues or this past winter when, you know, some people's cars wouldn't start, like if yeah. that kind of scared people off, but yeah. there are some great deals out there. I, I think it's the way to go. I mean, definitely. I'm definitely going to be doing it. I, I kind of have my, um, my doubts, mm -hmm. but um, considering, you know, my uses, I think it's a great, it's a great thing to do. So I'm really yeah. excited about it. Yeah, it sounds like based on your usage, it definitely could be um, a great fit for you. And I've, I've heard that too, like the pricing has really come down. I would say like, there's more, what's the word, like the volume, like there's, there's just more electric vehicles um, on the market now. So like, I know they used to be like, so outrageously expensive, like, and there's still, there's still a substantial cost, but I think the price is starting to come down as more and more people are using them, um, if that makes sense. Well, when they had this this thing about uh, the flooding and everything, because the battery is underneath the car, mm -hmm. they said that some of those batteries are blowing up because they were wet and they got wet in the things and they won't drive it. That's interesting. I can't speak to that specifically. I mean, I will say it's like a similar concern with like like a, a gas powered vehicle, like water splashing up during floods could also damage the vehicles. I get that and it still ran about five minutes later. Um, <laughs> the thing is, is that the battery is very, very expensive compared right. to, to get it fixed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would it's agree. It's expensive. Yeah, I think that's... Is that what's going to happen with snow and stuff like that? I think the vehicle is definitely made to be durable and like flooding is obviously like an extreme circumstance, but I would, I would like to say that like batteries would become more affordable as they become more commonly used, but I can't say right now. Yes, I agree. That was, um, I mean, it's, it's enclosed, you know, the battery is enclosed and it's mm -hmm. protected. So a little bit of water splashing up isn't going to do anything, of course. I mean, I think um, maybe you had heard something about extreme flooding if it was underwater, yeah. but it's just like any other vehicle from my research, because I've been watching a lot of videos and yeah. going on consumer reports, and um, I never heard anything like that, like a uh, concern about it just being exposed to the elements. But, and I do think with the battery technologies um, improving every year, um, I think that I'm, I'm hoping the cost of batteries when it comes time to replace it will be more Agreed. affordable. And yeah. then, you know, it's just like, you don't have to worry about an internal combustion engine. They call mm -hmm. it ice engine. And so you don't have to worry about getting your oil changed. You don't do the maintenance on the engine because there yeah. is no engine. So it's sort of a trade-off. You might have to do a little maintenance on the battery eventually, mm -hmm. but you don't have any of that um, maintenance cost associated with maintaining an engine, tuning it up, you know, getting it, you know, all the problems that can happen. And I think that's why the plug-in hybrids are more expensive because you're making mm -hmm. two systems. You have the the ICE, the internal combustion engine, as well as the electrical, you know, the battery component. Yeah, there's more so components. those are more expensive. Of yeah. course, then you don't, then you can, you have the best of both worlds. You can use the electric and then you can use the gas, but yeah. um, you pay the price for that. So it's definitely like more um, affordable if you're just going to go with the electric Especially yeah. if you get a used one. Oh, know. definitely. Yeah. I'll be interested to see in the future, like how that, how hybrids and things like that um, evolve. Cause I feel like range uh, capacities will increase over time. So it'll be interesting to see. Definitely. Well, good the time. Yeah, yeah, that too. There, That's another piece of the puzzle is um, adding more infrastructure where, where necessary. And we're already starting to see that, but I think it's also like, as consumer demand increases, then we will see those increase to meet that demand. How are insurance costs? You mentioned it costs more. How much more 
for car, right? Um, I don't have that exact number, but I can look into that for you if you'd like to know. It, it might be, I we also have like a couple of printed out copies of the EV guide um, with like resources linked, if you'd like to look at that. Okay. Yes, and you mentioned you would um, email the any kind of literature for anyone here today. And then we'll also have a link to that um, on our virtual events recordings page. Mm -hmm. um, we'll post this recording on that page and then we'll have a link to, to that document as well for anyone watching this recording. Yes, thank you. My takeaway is that it may be a great second car <laughs> <laughs> I would say, yeah, if you're the type of person that's not going on road trips very often, it could be great. It just depends on like who you are, what your travel habits are, what your commute is, if you have one. Well, I could live with one. I wouldn't have any place to plug it in. Yeah, I know that is a problem with renters. It sounds like it's being explored right now because it sounds like more I renters mean, are wanting it. <laughs> or I mean, I guess for some renters, if you're living in a more urban area, if you happen to have like a charging station that's really close to you, that could be an option. But I know that's not the case yeah, for everyone. Well, some more now. Now you get more. You you can say how much more. <laughs> for for which slide? You know, to, to charge your vehicle, how much more to charge it than if you wouldn't be able to charge it at all. Yeah, again, I, I don't have the exact price because those are like fluctuating. I know there's an additional fee, but it's a fee $15 or 20 or I don't know, five, you know. <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, that, that, fee, that fee seems like it's, you know, being hidden. <laughs> but I've never heard of anybody complain about it because I know several people that have Teslas and yeah, they're not complaining about it. Yeah. Well, you don't also, you don't have to pay for gasoline anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there is a price for any type of fuel, right? Whether it's electric to fuel your yeah. car or gasoline, um, it, nothing's free, you know, but it's just, you're, it's a lot less expensive and it's much better for the environment. We went from Eugene to the coast, which is about an hour and a half mm -hmm. to the ocean. And we had a resident of B&B. &B, yeah. So we just plugged it into the house whenever we weren't tooling up and down you know, yeah. highway one, we just kind of plugged in, you know, it's fine. And then we drove all the way back. We never had any trouble. So you're market. saying that you, when you rented a car on vacation, you, no, no. Oh. I went out there and friend passed. Oh, oh, your friend uh, had an EV when you were on vacation and yeah. you just plugged in. We just plugged it right into yeah. the house. Yep. And it was fine. We never had any problems. The battery was never that low. And they are a cool car. Is, is it similar to a gold cart? An electric vehicle? Yeah. It's it feels like like a traditionally gas powered vehicle. They look like nearly well, the no, exact I same. The plug -in. Oh <laughs> the plug-in? Um because I used to drive I mean, used to work at a place that I had to drive a car and every night we plug it sucker in. That's how it is, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I was kind of joking that um, it is kind of like a golf cart. I mean, it looks just like a street car. It's I'm just, but if you live in like, you know, these people like in the villages down in Florida, they all drive golf carts. They do. It would yeah. just kind of be like that concept where you use it. It's your around town car and you go to work and wherever. And, and then you just plug it in at night and you don't have to worry about your amazing pickup. Yes, amazing pickup. That's right. Right, right now. And the heat, if it's cold out, you turn the heat on, you got to keep that in. How about air conditioning? We didn't use the air. <laughs> the, the AC does work in electric vehicles. Yeah. Because the one. Yeah. Soon it's just right there. And it's yeah. The one that I drove was for a composting collection service. So their primary means of like picking up people's compost um, was like with electric vehicles. And they were able to have like a wide range of um, people they could service throughout Chicago. So the range is quite impressive of the vans and trucks. So that's something to keep in mind. What do the delivery things have their their vans are? Well, Amazon has a lot. Yeah, is it Amazon? Amazon? Do they really? Amazon does. Ooh, I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, or like yeah. 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 My brother's pointing them off to me one day and says, "You know that one? That one's electric." Like, How can you tell? Well, there's no, there's nothing. Hey, you know, they have this. <laughs> I didn't know that about Amazon. Exciting. Well, it just looks like it's quiet. Yeah, and they're also quiet. 
Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've seen the post office too, but that really doesn't have exhaust either. <laughs> no. No exhaust. <laughs> I'm just worried because I keep my car so long. That's me too. I'm over on my development. So you're you said you're worried because you keep your cars so long. Yes, I agree. I keep my cars for like 20 years. So yeah, I just got rid of my 20 year old car. Yes. Not because it was anything wrong with it, but because my nephew needed a vehicle. So yes. I'm able to have my So car. that's some a thought I've had as well. And I'm but what they the cars they're built on the same platform as the regular car. So it's just like they just don't have the gas engine. So everything else about the body will be the same, will last. So you probably, I'm thinking you'll just have to swap out the the battery. And if they do come out with some lithium ion or something like that, like the newest technology, I can't imagine that they wouldn't be able to retrofit something for the vehicles that are out there already. So I'm going to buy an EV. I'm doing it. I'll report okay. back to you. I'll let you know I'll report okay. back. Please yeah. do. You're okay. <laughs> yes, we'll test drive it here. I'm going to run the parking lot. Yeah, very interesting one. Does anyone else have any other questions before we um, stop the recording? All right. Well, thank you, thank you so much, Zoe. Yeah. This was uh, very informative. Um, yeah. I hope it encourages people to keep your mind open and take a look out there. And uh, my tip of the day is to look for a used one. <laughs> no, no, so, that's a great tip. So I'm, I couldn't believe it. And I yeah. thought, oh gosh, it must be just, you know, I was looking at the Nissan Aria and then I was like, oh, wow, these are great. And then I, I saw this YouTube video about how all the different car companies that um, in the first year, the, the depreciation is, mm -hmm. you know, varies between like, 20% and like 35%, like it's a big drop. I don't know what's going to happen in years to come, but I'm not in the market to sell my car. I, sure. I want to have a car to keep my car. So I don't care about, I, you know, I guess people are like, well, why should I spend? But you know, whenever you drive a car off the lot, a brand new car, you know, it depreciates anyway. Right. So, um, that's my tip. <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate you that. And I'm excited to hear about your experience. Yeah, if you ever want to let us know at Cub. Yeah. <laughs> and again, like I'm not an expert. So if you have more in-depth questions, please use the resources on our website. Take advantage of them. Yeah, I hope this helped you guys be more informed about okay, it. Okay, and your website is um, Citizens Utility Board? Citizens Utility Board, yes. And if you just look up like anything about electric vehicles, the guide will come up and other resources on our website. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Zoe. Thank you. I appreciate you having yeah, here. thank you. Okay. No, I won't.